Hey YouTube, Alex here and this is my new design with me. We are designing things for the new subscription coming out for January. So, if you want to be surprised, buy the new subscription coming out. End the video. Alright, the rest of you who don't mind surprises, I'm going to be designing some healthy items for uh, the subscription. The subscription is all about being better, be a better you. We've already got some really cool things that are going to be coming along in this sub, not to mention we're going to do a card and a washi tape included in every sub after January. Um, so that is super exciting. So the value is getting bigger. So the thing we're designing is we're going to do something. We have a quote that's called T9. Um, that's one of our stickers that we have. And it's just a bunch of quotes that are words that they're not, we already, we don't want to do a whole box um, for these stickers. Uh, we want it so you can place them around, maybe throw it on top of a washi or something. So we're going to come up with a bunch of inspirational quotes. And on top of that, we want a bunch of healthy items that kind of just get you in the mood to, to that New Year resolution. So we're thinking like fruits and vegetables and just some healthy activities. So I'm going to design some fruits and vegetables um, that we're going to use that you can scatter all around. And maybe this will end up being its own collection. We don't know. Uh, that's the beautiful thing is you never know until you start doing it. So let's get... Bam! There I am, and there we are. So, first thing, you always have to have a drink. Now, it's later at night this time, so tonight it's water. Caffeine right now would be bad. I mean, it would, but no. It's never bad. Okay. So, let us begin. Whoop, it went away. Alright, so I'm always a fan of drawing off of something, so I'm going to type in vegetables into my internet and I can kind of show you what's going on there. My internet decides to always go slow when I film these videos. And all I'm trying to do is get some mental images, so here's an example, of some fruits and vegetables. So uh, I definitely want to do like a green pepper and there's some clip art too that I mean I guess if you want to get even a little closer to what we're doing maybe I'll do a style like this. I think this is kind of cute. Um, but yeah, we'll definitely just do some fruits and vegetables, things that make you feel good about yourself. Uh, I probably won't give them legs. That's a little weird, but there we go. So I'm going to throw that in my second window. So while I'm working, I have something to kind of just go off of. Uh, and so I know what I'm trying to, at least in case I mess up an ear or corn or something. Um, I definitely like the little faces. I think I might add, make this kawaii. Uh, I like to make a lot of the food kawaii. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and begin. First thing I'm going to do is, uh, let's do a, what's super healthy? A carrot. Carrots are pretty simple. So I'm going to use the circle tool. I'm going to show you kind of what I'm going to do for this carrot. So let's go ahead. I made a circle tool. Now I held down shift. So as you're designing, you see how the square can, or the circle, <laughs> uh, can change shapes. And it's like, ah, how do you get that perfect circle? Hold down the shift button, it's going to lock the proportions. And I know I use this probably my most used uh, tool. And I'm going to, I outlined it in orange, but I really want the inside in orange. So I'm going to swap the colors, but I forgot to select it. So use V, select it, swap the colors. So now the inside is orange and there's a little white line, but I really don't want that either. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of the stroke. So now we've just got this nice circle. Um, we're going to take another one. And this time I don't want it to be locked. We're just going to kind of make a longer one. And we'll place it right in line. And you know, if you click and click the Alt button and drag down, it will duplicate the item that you drag from. So we're going to go ahead and line these up. So what I'm doing is a carrot um, obviously comes and it has those little bumps on the edges. And so rather than try and do this by hand, I'm going to do uh, three, and then I'm going to just start making them a little smaller. So holding down the shift button, I can make it smaller. But you see how I had it centered and it's moving around? Hold down after you selected and started changing the shape, and you're holding shift so it stays in proportion. Hit the alt button, and it will keep the center in that little X in the middle right where, uh, right where it is so you can obviously get this effect. So you don't have to try and reposition it later. And then once I kind of 
get what I want, I'm going to go ahead and click, alt, drag down, um, move again, take this, shrink it, hold down the alt button. Um, I only want it a little, don't want our carrot getting too small yet. We'll do one more. I'm not actually in love with this, the color of this carrot, and I think this will be the bottom of it. We'll move that up. How's that look? That looks like a good carrot. And really, it's just a bunch of circles that I made. One's perfectly round one, and then a bunch of uh, oblong ones that all kind of have the same shape. Um, I actually want the top one to be a little bigger. So we're going to do that, kind of give it a big head. There we go, perfect. Now I'm going to select them all, and because I don't want to be dragging and accidentally moving things around, and I actually don't have any need to you know, separate them. There's no need to show the white lines. Now they look like, you know, a bunch of eggs in a row. I'm going to merge them into one shape. And this is with the Pathfinder tool. And you'll either find it here, this is the image for Pathfinder, um, or you can go over to Edit, where is it, Object? Here we are. Path, and then I lied. Let me find out where this is. Hmm. Found it. Okay. So because I want these all merged together, I'm going to highlight them all or just leave them all for now. I'm going to open it up. So we're going to go over here to Effect, go down to Pathfinder, and you can do Add, Intersect, Exclude. Uh, so we can click Add. But see, it's not letting me do it because I haven't selected it. So that's why I really like using the Pathfinder uh, window because these are all the options for Pathfinder. And if I want to kind of just, you know, so here I've added them together. Uh, or united them. Um, and now it's one shape. If I want to go into that shape, uh, I can go in and, and adjust it a little uh, as its own shape rather than them being individual. So we've got the basis of our little carrot there. Uh, I think that's maybe a little too orange because our printers print slight, a touch dark. So I have selected, you're not seeing any changes made, and this happens to me sometimes. Um, select the shape, and because the stroke is on top, when I go to pick a color, it's going to pick the stroke color. So made a little mistake there, and now we can go ahead and click, and because I know our printer prints dark, this is actually going to print closer to what I think I want the carrot to be. Um, I'm going now, every carrot needs a good little fruit fruit top hat thing so now it's I'm trying to figure out do we want to do like blades of grass popping out we can do a swatch and this is why because now that I'm thinking about it what does the top of a carrot look like so let's go I'm gonna go over to my images I actually want to look at a real carrot just to double check that I'm not putting like a weird thing and it sure enough it's it kind of looks like wheat grass or long thin uh, stalks uh, come out so that's what we're gonna do we're not gonna give it that hook I'm gonna go ahead and delete that start here. So you're going to want to, what I'm going to do is, and this is just to kind of help me, is the top of a carrot, obviously the carrot has that little spot that where everything comes out. So I'm going to just add that in real quick. Um, and I'm sorry my voice is a little weird. I'm just getting over a cold. Let's go ahead and say that. It's mostly for me just to line up where the green stuff is coming out. And we can click here. Start in the center. And do a little angle, change the stroke, make it a nice green. Whoop, again, I'm messing up here. Okay, we want to make sure we're not drawing anything inside. We don't need any shading, we just need that stroke. So now we have that. We can make it a little thicker. Uh, <clears throat> we can round the corners. So if we like that, compare it to maybe that straight look there. I don't know. So luckily, that's something we can decide later. 
Uh, and again, how you change the stroke is you click on, here's where you make it thicker and thinner using the selection tool. So I've selected it, I come up here, and it gives me a bunch of options. And uh, I'm actually going to drop the opacity down to 90 because I kind of want to see something, and I'll explain that in a second. But you can click this orange stroke, and it'll give you some more in-depth options. So if we wanted to add an arrowhead, we could. Obviously, that's not something we want, so I'm undoing. But you can round the cap, which is making the edges round, um, make the corners join. So if you're doing corners, it's rounded and not sharp, um, and all that. And so something just kind of a guess an extra little tidbit. We're not going to use it here. So if you're doing a dashed line, rather than doing like a cut along these lines look like that, you can do rounded ones by rounding the uh, start and bottom of the stroke. So that kind of gives you a couple different options of how you want them to look. I actually don't hate the, uh, the look of it being dashed. I think that's kind of fun. So we're going to go ahead. Again, all this stuff can be changed later. Uh, And I figured this all out for a lot of you who don't know. Uh, I taught myself everything uh, myself. So there's no professional training here. I'm not some expert who spent my entire life doing this. Uh, I'm just a kid who wanted to really, really learn how to do this. And I did. At least I think I do a pretty good job. Um, and so if you're feeling like, oh, I can never learn this, nothing to be frightened of. Only thing you can do is fail. And if you already know that's the worst thing that's going to happen, that means the best thing is you're going to be successful and it's going to be awesome. So now we've got this carrot. And it's got this thing. And I'm not sure I like the dotted because I think that is getting away from the style. So we're just going to remove the dashed lines. Now we've got that. And here you can see something that's going on that's pretty interesting is because, I'm going to highlight all of them, make all the opacity, let's say 70%, 80%. When they cross over, it gets darker when they cross over. So you can do a lot of really cool effects uh, with opacity um, because these things are in front of and behind of other things. So. I kind of did that to give it some texture, some flavor, but again, all this is edible after. So once you get the lines, everything else can be adjusted. Uh, for example, I really like this, but I think maybe there's a little too much room between here and here. Take the direct select tool, highlight all the points, and I can literally click up, and it's going to move just the points I selected. And let me adjust that. This one's going to treat them all as a unit rather than individual points. So I'm moving the lines rather than the dots. And there we go. We've got something going on there. Kind of want to spread these out because you know you got that big circle. Having it all on one point makes it kind of look a little funky. And since that's, we're going to put some faces, that's going to be our little carrot hair. And I don't want to do kawaii eyes 100%. Give us some nice, simple, round, fun eyes. A little different. I try to always change my style. Not a lot. Um, actually, I try to be pretty consistent when it comes to certain things. But I do really enjoy... Um, challenging myself for different styles because I think that's going to be a pretty cute carrot once I get uh, some sweet mouths. So for the mouth, I'm going to draw a circle and I don't want our carrot screaming but what I'm doing is I'm using half of the circle and then I'm going to take that and since it is still a line that we're editing, go in here and round the corners so now I made a perfect smiley face rather than clicking clicking in the middle, holding down uh, shift, making a half, and then flipping that over and then having to add it to the other half or doing it by hand where it could be a little wonky. Uh, because a lot of this, this 
what I'm trying to do here is really use geometric shapes where a lot of the things are the same. Um, this gives me control. And now that I have it perfectly spaced, if I did want to change the mouth shape, I can come down, click on this path, and then move it up, move it down, kind of find exactly what's perfect. Uh, obviously, we don't want green mouth, so we're going to have to switch that to a black mouth to stay in line with the eyes. It seems a little thick, so we can bring it in. Uh, if we wanted to change the shape, so it's more of a kind of like that kind of mouth, you could do that here. Maybe give it a wonky mouth. I don't know, I'll make a weird face. More of like a smirk. And all that is super easy. It's not like I had to draw a circle and then draw the shape from it, which you could do, but that's amazing and lots of time. And I'd just rather make a happy mouth. So there's a, but that's the thing with Illustrator. There's a million ways to do it. So that's, you know, as long as you get something you like, it's as much about the result as it is. Uh, it's all about the results. It really doesn't matter as long as you get to the, you know, the finish line. So let's go ahead. I'm going to take that and we go back to the original. And I like the original. I think that's that's the winner. So I'm going to show you, I want everything to be perfect, so I'm going to group these eyes together. And the reason is, is I'm going to highlight these three shapes, the circle, the two eyes, and the mouth. And I want them all lined up perfectly. So this is another super useful tool. Just clicking that, it's going to put the center all together. Now, had I not grouped the eyes and tried that, it's going to, since they're individual shapes, it's going to smash them together and put them and make a cyclops carrot. Uh, which, you know, might be cute for some people, but uh, that's what happens when you put GMOs in your food, and we don't want that. This is, you know, healthy, all organic. There we go. So by grouping it, it treats it as one shape, even though they're two separate. It, the program recognizes it as it's its own unit, and that goes same for when moving it around. They're, you know, moved in together. And cohesion or something, some word. So I like that. So we've got our carrot, and that's a basic shape. Now, I do want to come in and add, you know, carrots got those little, uh, like, links in them. And so maybe I'll add some shading, too. So first thing, I only want to draw on the inside. And so comparatively, if I do this, you can see there's a line now, and he's got kind of wonky arms, which might actually be fun now that I've done that. He might have some. Because they, they got the little tendrils, tendrils come out I don't know that's kind of funky so if you're like oh I kind of like that but I'm gonna go in a different direction so I'll just save that over to the side I won't even look at it and I'll just keep working on this and that's really good if you want to go back every step you do that you think you're making a major change uh, you can go back and compare oh you know I did like that or you get to the end of something and you don't love it by making copies and throwing them off to the side where you don't even need to see them it'll make it so if you go back you're like oh I did really like what I was doing there maybe the rounded mouth and the rounded hair and everything that's something I really wish I had and now I have to you know try to undo or go back and lose what I'm working on uh, make a copy super easy right so all right, so what I was trying to show you before is by clicking this, draw inside won't let me draw outside of it, but it will let me draw inside of it. So you can see how it only draws within the shape that I selected. And that is how we do magical shading. So here's a, maybe a little trick. So if I wanted to, I might not end up with yellow, but at least yellow will give me enough of a contrast uh, to really see what I want. Now, I do want it to be a little like carrot cut looking. And then we want to move that up so it kind of matches where that line is. Kind of like that. So, now, since we have this selected, and the easiest thing in the world is double click on it. It's going to bring it into its own little universe. Um, so that's why the face disappeared. So that's actually a good thing. It's because you double clicked on the shape. And we don't want it perfect. Cause... Okay, so now it's not a flat shape. It's got these lines on it that kind of make it pop out of the screen a little more. 
And we're going to go a step further. Um, we're going to go shading. And this is where you can really go in and tweak your shape. Because I realize this is going to be pretty small. I'm actually going to want a little more shadow to give it some hope of being recognized as a shadow rather than just like, why does my sticker look dirty on the side? So now we've got this carrot and it went from this boring circle shape to it's got some pizzazz default settings. I export it as something I can use. So I export as a PNG um, and I got to put it in the same area. So luckily you're not seeing any of the ruining things for the new sub. Save it and it's going to give you a little preview. And because of a PNG, it gives us a invisible background. So what that means is if you're looking at this photo on a viewer, there's nothing behind it. So if the background's black, it's going to be black. If the background's white, it's going to be white. And that's really nice when laying down stickers because you can just find those outside edges rather than having white there or having white, let's say, in the picture. It can know what area of white is actually the sticker. So if you're doing a snowman, and what area of white is the background? Because if you did white circles on white, obviously you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna end up with just a white screen. You know, snow a bunny loss in a blizzard. So that by doing that clear background, you can kind of separate that. So we've got that high. I always like high resolution. 300s really good uh, for printer. It's what most printers can print at. Background color transparent. If you did want a white background, you could do that. If we wanted a black background, that kind of shows you what I mean. But I'm always a fan of transparent. That's why we save in PNGs. And okay, and we got one shape done. So now here's another thing. Because I am going to be making a bunch of these, I don't want the eyes and the mouth to be consistent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight both of these, duplicate it over here, and I'm going to take my carrot and I'm going to bring it over to the edge of the screen. And the reason why is as I'm designing the next thing, I'm going to be struggling to drag this, uh, you have to click on the path. You can't click on the color, and that's where I kind of goof up. Um, but I kind of want to, like, I'll zoom in, focus on whatever I'm going to design next, maybe a tomato or something. And then I want to zoom out and make sure that it looks good next to this carrot because I'm designing a set. And having a set of things that are, you know, similar instead of having you know one with a wonky mouth one with this kind of eyes one with that kind of eyes that's what really makes your sets look good um, and when you're presenting it that carrot might not be phenomenal on its own it might be a little weird or something but by having a carrot next to a tomato next to a radish or corn or an onion or broccoli or all these other healthy vegetables we're you know might be designing in the next few days. I know they look good together. I'm super super in love with our carrot and I'm moving forward with that. Uh, and even though it's you know I'm drawing off of a carrot online or maybe I saw an artwork that I really like and I want to kind of mimic it because I did it by hand there's no way to truly mimic 100% someone's style uh, just your muscles work different when moving the mouse. Um, so that's what's really cool is you're always, as long as you're doing it by hand, you're going to be learning and developing your own style. And eventually you'll, you know, zoom out of everything and get to see really what your style is and how you do things. And it might be different, you know. Um, James Pollock threw paint on a wall and it splattered paint and, you know, that's his, that was his style. It made him famous because he was true to himself. So, if my way doesn't work for you and you find another way, again, I'm not the authority. I'm just a guy trying to figure this out as long as is with everyone else, but I'm probably more stubborn than most people. So I'm going to sit down and, and try and try and try again until I get it. So thank you for tuning in. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button. If you really, well, that's if you really like it. Uh, if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, uh, hit that like button if you like this video. If you think these videos are boring, hit the dislike button. Tell me in the comments what you're working on, how you're going to be using Illustrator. Maybe I can come up with some ideas to help you with for your next project. Uh, I'll definitely give you a shout out in the video or definitely respond to your comments. Um, thanks for tuning in and uh, yeah, <laughs> I did another one. Now i got to film another one of these because Thanksgiving's next week. <laughs>